it takes its name from the Roman god of war. A distant, rusty orb in the night sky. A source of rampant speculation for centuries. Could it be home to a rival civilization? Is there really a face on its surface? This intriguing planetary neighbor still captivates us. And as both a potential base for future colonization and the keeper of four billion year old biological secrets, Mars, the red planet, may hold the keys to both our future and our past. If human beings ever inhabit another world in our solar system, this is the most likely candidate the red planet, Mars. To a visitor from Earth, a tour of Mars might be very reminiscent of places back home. Places like Southern California's Mojave Desert, Geo and astrobiologist Ken Nielsen finds this desert area so much like Mars, he comes here to try to better understand conditions on the red planet. You travel around here in the dune buggy and you see features that look just like the dune features on Mars. If you go further and look in the background and see all of these red hills full of iron oxides that we see on Mars, Mars is filled with iron, and it's oxidized iron, basically rust, turns into dust particles. And in addition to the beautiful dunes, you have this red atmosphere, sometimes red all over the surface of the planet. Huge dust storms. They don't call it the red planet for nothing. But while much of the Martian terrain is similar to Earth, some geological features dwarf any of their kind on our home planet. A mountain named Olympus Mons, Latin for Mount Olympus, is the tallest known peak in the solar system. It's a now dormant volcano that rises 15 miles above the Martian surface. If you draw a picture of Olympus Mons and put it next to Mount Everest and, uh, and the big island of Hawaii, even taken all the way down to the base of the ocean, they look like molehills compared with Olympus Mons on Mars. That mountain is so large, you could be on its slopes and you would not know that you're on the slope of a volcano because the base is so huge before you get to its summit. Yet, as awe-inspiring as the Martian surface appears, it is a brutal, inhospitable zone for human beings. Six green board, five, four, three, two, one, engine start, and liftoff of the Delta II rocket carrying the spirit from Earth to planet Mars. It's cold, it's dry, it's desolate. There are dust storms that can darken the skies for weeks or even months at a time. It goes down to 100 degrees below zero at night, every night. Compounding these cruel conditions is an atmosphere with no oxygen. Martian air and even occasional cloud formations are made up almost entirely of carbon dioxide. So it's not a nice place. You wouldn't enjoy it if you went there. Mm. 
Mars is small relative to the Earth, only about half the size of our planet. And its distance from us is never less than 34 million miles. It appears as nothing more than a tiny red orb in our night sky. Even so, Mars has captivated humankind for centuries. The planet takes its name from the Roman god of war. The Romans associated this distant world with hostility and unrest because of its blood-like color and because of its distinctive movement in the sky. Mars wanders. It doesn't do what the stars do. The red planet occasionally appears to be moving backward across the sky, a behavior that confounded observers for centuries. But in 1514, close study of this planetary movement led Polish astronomer Nicholas Copernicus to a revolutionary understanding of the solar system. For much of recorded history, people thought that Earth was at the center of the universe. So along comes Copernicus, and he says, no, maybe the Earth isn't at the center of the universe. Maybe the explanation for all this is that things are going around the sun. And if all the planets are going around the sun, then we can explain why as Earth passes Mars in the orbit, Mars begins to wander in our sky. It looks like it's going this way, and then it starts to go this way. <laughs> 